Um, as you can see, I picked myself up some more 42 pound weights. I got these from Home Depot. Um, I believe they were $68 a piece, but they had free shipping on them. So if you go to Home Depot, you can get these weights of free shipping. Otherwise, in most cases, you will have to pay for shipping like I did with these weights here. Now, these weights are from Heavy Hitch. These are about 41 pounds a piece, so they're one pound lighter than the John Deere. They cost $10 less, though, than the John Deere. Um, these are about $58, um, but the issue with these is you got to pay for shipping. Last time I bought these from Heavy Hitch, I had to pay, I think it was like 20 30 bucks a piece extra for shipping so that puts them above the cost for these not to mention they actually weigh a little bit less so i'm losing four pounds here versus these are four pounds heavier so if you guys are looking for suitcase weights i highly recommend you guys to go to home depot and check out these john deere weights um, another thing with the john deere weights versus the heavy hitch um, the heavy hitch weights the way they cut these and sanded them and ground them they're like none of them are even some of these don't sit right some are actually taller as you can see when they're on the bracket they don't look too bad but when i have these sitting on the ground next to each other each one of them leans a different direction um, none of them sit on this uh, frame straight so if i didn't have these other weights on here they all want to lean one way or the other and they just they rattle a lot because if they're tipped to one side they're more apt to rattle up and down the weight bracket frame so i really don't like that about these but aside from that i mean they were a decent deal and they definitely do the job but that's just something to take note of the john deere weights on the other hand as you can see all these are cut exactly the same they're like precision cut each one of these handles are exactly the same where over here you'll get skinnier handles thicker handles every one of them handles is a little bit different these ones are all chipped up they're like they were just spray painted where these look like they're actually powder coated um, so there's that they sit better on the frame they won't rattle back and forth and like i said they're cheaper with the free shipping so these would be my go-to weights if i was going to recommend you guys to buy anything um it'd be these john deere ones here this weight bracket i actually made myself and i did a video on it which i'll link up here kind of explaining how i built this weight bracket so far it's been holding up really well i've never actually had this much weight on there before so we'll see if i have any stress cracks or not but um, I welded it really well, so I don't think I'm going to have any problems with it. Um, it was actually a Chinese um, draw bar that I turned into a weight bracket. Like I said, I have that video you guys can watch, and uh, I kind of go into detail about how I built this weight bracket and the money I had into it. Now that I have this extra weight, I actually want to increase my hydraulic lift pressure even more. A lot of you guys that watch my channel know that I have increased my lift pressure. First, I went from stock, which was like 1650 when I got this thing. From 1650, I bumped it up to about 1900 PSI or 1950. I ran it like that for almost a year, and then recently, Recently, I'd made another video where I bumped it up to 2,250 PSI. Um, and that seemed to give me tons of power. But then once I did that, I was starting to lift the back end up in the air again. Um, at 2,000 PSI or 1950 with these four weights, I'd never had any problems lifting the rear end in the air. Um, now my tires are filled as well. So I had filled tires and four weights and that was definitely enough. But once I went to 2,250 pounds, um, these four weights were no longer enough. And as you guys seen in a lot of my videos, I had no problem lifting the back tires. Now that I got some more weight back here, I assume that I'm around 520 pounds between all the suitcase weights, the rear filled tires, and just my quick hitch here and my weight bracket. So now I should have no problems. I should be able to increase it a little bit farther. Now I definitely don't recommend you guys to do this. It's very dangerous. You're really gonna be asking for problems if you increase your pressure above 2,000 PSI. Um, there's plenty of guys running 2,000 PSI and they felt it was a good enough boost for them and they also don't seem to have to worry about blowing out lines or leaky hydraulic cylinders on their loader i've been running 2250 pounds for a better part of a year now but yeah i've had no problems with it so far um you know i can get my loader to twist a little bit if i'm pulling on something on a corner so it's got that much power to where i can actually see the whole frame twisting um but you know they spring back it's not it's not a big deal i haven't had any issues with like my, my hydraulic cylinders leaking so there's no leaks i've been checking them i haven't had any hoses leak any fittings leak um, basically the biggest problem I have is my front tires trying to keep enough air in them um, a lot of people think I always have flat tires because I'm just always overloading the front end um, which makes these tires squish down quite a bit um, so if I increase it again I'm definitely gonna have to run like 30 ish pounds in these 32 pounds in these um, and I don't want to go any higher than that because these tires aren't rated for much more air than that and then the other thing is is the more weight you put on this front end loader the harder you're working the entire front axle and you're working the steering linkage here or the steering cylinder so you got a hydraulic steering cylinder to front here with these tie rod ends and one major flaw with the Kubota bx in my opinion is these little brackets right here so these are little steering end caps for your hydraulic steering cylinder and um, what happens is if you overload this or you end up binding your tires up against a tree or something and you turn this hydraulic cylinder's got enough pressure to actually bend this end bracket here um, I've actually seen guys on uh, form sites bend these pretty bad. Um, so that is one major issue. And that's why I actually have plans to build my own steering brackets. And I want to actually make like a beefed up version of it. So I plan on doing that come, you know, winter time. Or if I end up bending these sooner, I'll do it sooner. But that's one major flaw. I think if I can get around that and make sure I keep enough air pressure in my tires, 
Um, I should be able to go a little bit higher on a pressure. I don't want to go over like 2400 PSI, I don't think. Um, and I probably won't ever increase it again because you're really reaching the end of the limitations of this tractor between the tire size, the rim size, what the tires can handle, what the front axle can handle, what the steering can handle, um, and even what the cylinders can handle. You know, these are only rated probably 3,000 PSI, same with the hoses. So once you start creeping up there like, you know, 2,500 PSI and you start putting some loads on these, um, you know, that pressure gets increased even more and you're really going to be apt to blowing out a cylinder or bending a rod or something like that. Um, so this is definitely dangerous. I don't recommend it at all. Um, I'm just doing it because I like to push the envelope. I like to push the limits. I mean, who wouldn't want to know like where this thing breaks at? And if anyone's going to break it, I'd rather have it be me and record it, get it on footage and show you what happened, what bent or broke and you know, at what pressure that ended up happening at. So what we're gonna do now is as you guys can see, I have my pallet forks on there. Um, what I plan to do is I'm gonna actually lower the pressure down to its original pressure. So I'm gonna go right around like 18, 1900 PSI. We're gonna go back there and I'm gonna throw a pallet on here full of bricks and we're gonna see how many bricks I can lift to get the pallet off the ground. Once we've done that, I'm gonna bring it back in here. I'm gonna increase my pressure and then we're gonna go back out there and I'm gonna lift that same pallet with the same amount of bricks and we're gonna see how high I can lift it off the ground. All right, guys, so I got the relief valve out. Go ahead and pull the spring up. Make sure you don't have any uh, stuck to the back of the spring so you don't lose them. I'll go ahead and dump these out. Okay, so there's all the shims that I had. As you guys can see, I had quite a bit of them. I mean, that's like a quarter inch or eighth inch of shims. So now what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to pull out one of the biggest shims, which I think is a 0.4. Um, and I think it's every 10th is like 40 or 50 PSI. I'm actually going to pull out too. So I'm going to pull out the biggest shim and the smallest shim. And I'm going to stick them back in there. We'll see where that puts us. Hopefully it puts us around 18, 1900 PSI. And then we can go out and see how much we can lift. We'll go ahead and throw a pressure gauge on. I'm going to use this first coupler here. Okay, I got you guys set up in front of the gauge. I'm gonna go ahead and start it, bring it to full revs, and we'll see what this pressure gauge reads. All right guys, so as you've seen, it was actually at 1950, um, which is perfect because that's gonna be the best case scenario when you guys get this tractor, if you buy it brand new. Best case scenario, it's gonna be at 1950 PSI if you're lucky. Uh, most of them will ship out between 1850 and 1900. Um, some will even be lower, like 1750, 1800. Um, but best case scenario, 1950. I think that's about where Kubota sets them at from the factory um, when they're actually set properly. Um, so let's go ahead and go back there now. I'll get the pallet thrown on the forks here and we'll see how many cinder blocks we can lift up. All right guys, so we got 20 cinder blocks on there. These are full size cinder blocks. I don't know what's gonna lift this. We'll go ahead and try. And if not, I'll take off one or two of them big weights and we'll try it again. Um, basically, we just wanna get this so it can lift it, you know, fairly easily, at least like an inch off the ground or so. That way it's an even test. Um, and then I'll just leave the pallet right here. I'll go increase the pressure. We'll come back and try it again with the increased pressure. definitely too much weight I'm gonna go ahead and take off both of these bigger blocks and then we'll try it again
Okay guys, so we are able to get it off the ground. Um, I ended up pulling off three bricks all together. So two of them really heavy bricks and one regular brick. So in total, we've got 17 bricks on here. Um, so I didn't think that was too bad. So now let's go ahead and measure what it is off the ground here, just right in this back corner, just to try to keep it even. Um, so I'm gonna go right off this back corner. And it looks like we're about six and a half inches. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But six and a half inches off the ground on the very back corner there. Um, now I'm a little bit nosed up, just very slightly. So I'll make sure I try to match that when I do the other test. This isn't gotta be an exact science because it's just to kind of demonstrate the difference in power when increasing your hydraulic pressure um, to show what it does versus lift capacity. So um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a pretty big difference from this. So I got the valve back out. Go ahead and take all the shims out of this just so I can kind of see what I had in here. Now to bring this pressure up even more, I have one more really thick shim. This is thicker than all of them. So I'm gonna add this in with it. I'm hoping it doesn't put me above 2,500 because I really don't want to be above that. I'd really like to be at like 2,450, somewhere around there at 2,400. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw all this in there now. I'll go ahead and get the gauge back on there. As soon as I have this pressure where I want it, we'll get back there and see how many bricks we can lift. Right, guys well as you've seen i was able to get it at exactly 2400 um, so 2400 psi um, as i said before i was at 2250 psi so that's about 150 pounds of an increase um, in pressure so i'm guessing that's going to net me about another 80 pounds that i can lift on the front end loader so that's gonna be really nice to have given what i do with this tractor um, as you see i pulled out one shim and put in the thicker shim so uh, the first time i tested it i was well above 2500 psi so i just ended up pulling out one of my medium sized shims and that put me exactly at the pressure i wanted to be at um, so now we can go ahead and go back there and give this a whirl. The nice part is now that I got enough suitcase weights, I shouldn't have any problems lifting the rear end up in the air, I'm hoping. Um, so we should be able to get a nice test out of this, um, actually seeing what this thing can lift now versus stock. All right guys, so we're back over here at the pallet. Got the pallet forks in as far as they will go, just like last time. We've got the exact same amount of cinder blocks on the pallet in the same order. So we'll go ahead and lift this up and see how far it can lift it. The other one did six and a half inches off the ground. So we'll see what the difference is now from stock versus 2400 PSI. Right, guys well there you have it you can see the difference is pretty much night and day um, from being able to lift it only six inches off the ground to being able to lift it this high um, let's go ahead and get a measurement on that i've got it tilted back at about the same angle just a slight angle backwards and like i said we're not trying to get down to the exact number here mainly to show you guys what a difference lift pressure makes um, on tractors like these um, so now we are three foot off the ground as you can see there from the very back corner of this pallet where before we were six and a half inches off the ground so that is a huge difference. Um, I hope this video was helpful, guys. Um, I really been wanting to do this video for a long time. Um, there's videos online of people, you know what I mean, trying to lift heavy weight with these tractors and they really just don't look like they're very capable. And that's because honestly, at the stock pressures, they're really not that capable in my opinion. Um, I really do believe that Kubota done these down quite a bit. And I believe the reason they did that is because these tractors are so light in the rear. 
Um, the John Deere 1025R, 1023E, those tractors come factory with a lot more weight back here, whether it's the framing or um, just the design of the frame, they're just heavier in the back. So they're able to get away with a higher relief valve pressure to allow you to lift so much more on the front of the loader. So when people compare the 1025R or the 1023E versus the Kubota BX, I really feel like it's an unfair comparison. Um, just because of how low the pressure is set on a Kubota BX versus the John Deere. I'm pretty sure the John Deere 1 Series are set at right around like 2200 or 2300 PSI. And a lot of guys I think are even bumping them up to 2500 PSI. Um, so obviously, as I showed you here, that's going to make a gigantic difference. That being said, doing what I'm doing today is definitely dangerous. It's definitely not recommended. I just mainly wanted to do this for you guys today so that you guys can see the difference with hydraulic pressures and the amount of power it can give your loader. So there's a lot of damage that you could be doing to this tractor. Um, not to mention that the hydraulic pump, you know, they're only set up to run so much PSI and after a certain PSI, it really starts to put a lot of load on them. Um, so the hydraulic pump is inside the transmissions on these. And if the hydraulic pump goes on these, it's a very expensive um, repair. So uh, these are all things to keep in mind. Not to mention that if you're going to be doing this, um, which I don't recommend you to, um, you're definitely going to need enough ballast. So that was one of the reasons I finally turned mine up is because now I have enough ballast to actually make it worth it and to make it safe. As you can see, the rear end is totally stable. It's on the ground. And as high up as I got those cinder blocks, um, thing ain't moving. So I think this is going to be a huge uh, benefit for me and what I do um, just because I'm always looking to get as much as I can out of this little tractor uh, because I don't have the money or the means to upgrade or want to upgrade. Um, this tractor basically does everything I want it to. It's the perfect size I need um, for the type of jobs that I do and the type of work that I do. Um, so me squeezing a little bit out of it, um, to me it's worth the risk. And if something breaks on it, I know it was my fault and not the tractor's fault. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully it was informative. That was mainly why I made this video. I know hydraulics in these little tractors is a big subject. I know a lot of guys wonder about the hydraulic relief pressure and what kind of benefits increasing it can actually do. So that hopefully will open your guys' eyes into showing you um, just how much power you can gain if you do it, um, if you decide to. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.